it's connected because uh, if we have uh, uh, France, other countries, and from uh, Indonesia, uh, I'm uh, Philippe Louis Dreyfus. I'm uh, uh, Vice President of Medef International and uh, President of the France Indonesia Business Council. Uh, at the same time, I'm Chairman of uh, Louis Dreyfus Armateur, my our company. Uh, in business for 170 years uh, in shipping and logistics and uh, quite uh, present in Indonesia with uh, uh, our partnership with Sinarmas uh, uh, Golden Agri. Uh, we employ uh, together 1,300 people in Indonesia. Uh, uh, and um, I would like now to really start the meeting and to welcome our distinguished guests uh, and thank them for being available today. Um, I would like uh, first to uh, introduce the Minister Eronga Artarto, uh, Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs, and uh, another minister, Mr. Suarso Monoarfa, uh, Minister of Planning and national development, the uh, well-known uh, Bafinas. I would like also to, to uh, welcome uh, our ambassador of Indonesia to France, Armanata Nazir, uh, and uh, French ambassador in Jakarta, Olivier Chauvard. Uh, last, uh, François Corbin, who is, uh, has just been uh, named uh, Special Representative uh, of the Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs for the development of uh, economic relations with ADEA. Uh, more globally, I would like to welcome the, all the representatives of French and Indonesian companies who joined us this morning. I understand there's over 100 French companies, maybe not all connected now, and uh, more than 70 Indonesian uh, companies. With the presence in Indonesia of uh, BKPM and of our, and our, our friends of Kadim. A very special thank to uh, uh, Armanata Nazir, Excellency, for the support and help for the organizing this meeting today uh, at the Indonesian Embassy. Uh, constant support of MEDEF International of the Indonesian Embassy in Paris has always been uh, uh, very appreciated. We have today a web meeting uh, and uh, this web uh, meeting uh, MEDEF International who has done quite a few over the last months with the countries with which MEDEF has uh, links. Um, this, these web meetings have replaced delegations and uh, talking about Indonesia uh, very unfortunately, due to the, uh, what has happened, uh, we had to cancel a trip to Indonesia, uh, in, uh, to Jakarta and Surabaya, which were developed in March last. Uh, and uh, it was very well prepared by both embassies and uh, by, with local organization in Indonesia. So it was, we were very sorry to have to cancel it. Uh, this visit was uh, supposed to focus on infrastructure, urban issues, maritime issues, and uh, it's a very much a pity that we had to cancel it. Uh, but it is clearly uh, our, uh, our uh, this is a message we want to put uh, forward. It is clearly our intent to, as soon as it will be possible, to reorganize another delegation of French companies to Indonesia as soon as possible. Uh, we, 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 we remain fully committed to do that and uh, we will be looking very much forward uh, organizing it. Um, we uh, had uh, to, uh, uh, with this crisis, uh, had many, many changes in most of our companies, in all our companies all over the world, the French company, Indonesian companies, but also a lot of uh, significant uh, changes had to be brought uh, uh, by the Indonesian uh, uh, government. And uh, uh, there has been decisions made, a plan who is in, uh, will be in force. And this is something which we'll be very happy to listen the ministers to, uh, talk to us about. 
it is very important to us French companies one to understand the renewed priorities of Indonesian government to sustain growth and ensure the country's development during the years to come especially with regards to large strategic projects that were announced recently. Two, it's important also to listen to the Indonesian government's intentions on how to foster foreign direct investment to Indonesia, which means we'd like to hear about the reform agenda mainly, a major point in the President Jokowi's uh, program. Uh, Last, it's, uh, it's interesting to hear about uh, how the French companies could be, who are quite active and has been for many, many years uh, in Indonesia, could do more and be more active and more present. So this has been my introduction, so it has been a little long. I, I will now uh, uh, let the floor to our distinguished guests. Uh, and I will uh, start giving uh, the floor to uh, the ambassadors. I will start with uh, uh, Excellency uh, Amranata Nadir from the Indonesia Embassy in uh, Paris. Tata. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Philip. Thank you, my good friend. Uh, Selamat siang, yang terhormat Pak Menko. Your Excellency, Bapak Erlangga Hartato, Coordinating, Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs of Indonesia. Uh, Your Excellency, Olivier Chambard, French Ambassador in Indonesia. Mr. Francois Corbon, uh, Special Representative of, uh, for France for ASEAN and France Relation. Distinguished uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, Paris. In fact, those are in Paris. Good, mo good afternoon, uh, those in Jakarta. Welcome to this uh, virtual Indonesia Infrastructure Forum. This is the first of its kind. It's something that we have to adjust uh, because of the situation. But having said that, uh, 2020 is a very special year for Indonesia and France uh, relationship. It marks the 70th anniversary of Indonesia and France diplomatic relation. But uh, as we all know, 2020 is also a very challenging year. The world, as we know, is facing a crisis like no other. The pandemic has turned our lives upside down, forcing us to move from our comfort zone go beyond business as usual, to be more creative and innovative, and to better seize opportunities. This is basically much uh, of our purpose and intention when MEDEF and the embassy here plan to do this infrastructure and investment forum. It is to encourage French business community to go beyond their comfort market to seize market and business opportunities in Indonesia. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, due to the pandemic, many activities of the Indonesia for the Indonesia France 2017th anniversary has been canceled or postponed. Like Mr. Philip earlier said, including the large French business mission that was planned in late March, early April. Uh, but I'm happy to hear that Philip has just informed us that the intention is still to carry on forward with this mission, uh, hopefully this year. More than ever. Thank you, Philip. But despite the setback, the enthusiasm and the energy of France-Indonesia cooperation remains very strong. At the government level, we are finalizing a defense cooperation agreement. And, a, and, an action, and an action plan to re-energize Indonesia-France strategic partnership. Our intention is to sign these agreements in the second half of 2020. With economic cooperation being the focus, these agreements will open even more opportunities for the business community. Uh, I'm also happy to share with you that France 
Development Agency, AFD, have extended 150 million euro facility to PT SME for financing green infrastructure and health infrastructure projects in Indonesia. This is on top of AFD 300 million euro facility to support economic program and help mitigate COVID in Indonesia. French companies are also very active in Indonesia. To name a few, as an example, Decathlon, L'Oreal, Michelin have worked with the government task force to help mitigate COVID-19. This is just some example on how the strength of relationship between Indonesia and France. Today, we are fortunate uh, to have the Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs and who will soon be joining us, the Minister for Development Planning. They will provide situation update and highlight key reasons why you all should look at Indonesia, invest in Indonesia, and be in Indonesia, particularly in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, as a prelude, as an international, allow me just to highlight some points. First, I cannot emphasize more, but there is an abundance of opportunities and strategic, and strategic partners and strategic projects, like was mentioned uh, by Philip, ready to go for the French companies and investors. From sectoral initiatives such as energy, transport, and maritime, to mega infrastructure projects like the building of our new capital. Whether your business is in an energy, infrastructure, transport, pharmaceutical, agriculture, maritime defense, manufacturing, or customer retail, Indonesia offers a lot of opportunities, a lot more profits to be made in Indonesia by large, medium, even small French companies. Second, Indonesia is not only the biggest market in Southeast Asia, but I would like to remind you that we are also an integral part of ASEAN single market and production base. Most, more importantly, we are also part of the RCEP, a trade, a trade block involving 15 countries in the Asia Pacific, incorporating ASEAN, Australia, China, Korea, and New Zealand. RCEP represents over 30% of the global population. Thus, I'm sure those who are thinking to relocate to Indonesia, RCEP makes it easier for you to, relo to relocate. Third, and I think this is what Philip highlighted earlier, and it's most important, the Indonesian government is very committed to economic reform and bureaucratic reform. The omnibus law that is in progress is an example. We continue to implement pro-business policies, extend, extend incentive, and facilitate investors and business, businesses. I can give you an example. Even when the, the Indonesia is currently implementing a restriction due to the pandemic of travel, we are ready to make exception for French businesses that are willing to go to Indonesia to do business. Over the last week, for example, the embassy has facilitated a number of French businessmen for a special permit to enter Indonesia. In short, I encourage you, all the business community in France, to look east, to look at Indonesia. The embassy is here for you. We are ready to assist you and to facilitate you. Finally, uh, in closing, let me just extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to Medef and to my good friend, uh, Philip, who is Rivers, for the long-standing commitment and cooperation in continuing to improve the relationship between Indonesia and France. And finally, I would like to thank the Medef Secretariat for facilitating uh, this uh, event. Thank you. I give back to you, Philip. I think we, we have a small issue with the uh, chairman's connection. Maybe Mr. Ambassador of France uh, could give you the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Papa Erlanga, uh, dear Papa Swarso, 
Monsieur le Président, Louis Dreyfus, cher, cher Philippe, euh, cher Monsieur François Corbin, dear representative of the Indonesian administration and dear representative of the, the French companies. Uh, first, I would like to thank the MEDEF International and the Indonesian Embassy for organizing this uh, webinar. My good friend uh, Patata said exactly what I wanted to say, <laughs> so my, my task is, uh, is easier now. I just uh, wanted to, to stress uh, a few points. Of course, we are eager to hear the presentation of Bapa Erlanga and Bapa Suarso. I just would like to say that uh, according uh, to OECD, among G20 countries, Indonesia will be the third country least affected in terms of growth by the crisis. And uh, among ASEAN, it is one of the countries showing the best economic resilience. Uh, these achievements are due to the excellent uh, budgetary and monetary management by the Indonesian authorities. Uh, in our two countries, we are entering now a, a second stage of with the resuming of uh, economic activity and we are under a new normal. And the French government has launched several sectoral economic recovery plans and will announce in September a broader stimulus package. In the same line, the uh, Indonesian government has been increasing its uh, economic support plan to kickstart its uh, economy. Uh, in the backdrop of the, the current crisis, we at the governmental level have to work jointly to preserve and promote international tra trade and foreign investment with the objective of boosting growth and uh, employment. I, I must would like to share with you the fact that last week our two foreign ministers, uh, Ibu Retno Marsoudi and uh, Jean-Yves Le Drian, had a very uh, fruitful and long call uh, they discussed many uh, topics, the, and, uh, particularly on the bilateral relation, relationship. Uh, Patata mentioned the, the 70th anniversary, but they discussed at length uh, about economic ties. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, in the next uh, few years, we'll see uh, a significant increase in our uh, economic uh, relationship. And uh, it is uh, the task of uh, the French Embassy in Jakarta and the Indonesian Embassy in Paris to work hand-to-hand uh, uh, -hand, uh, to uh, give more boost to our uh, bilateral economic uh, relations. Uh, most of the French companies which are attending today's webinar already work in Indonesia and are interested uh, to develop their business with Indonesia. Today, they are adapting to the new normal and are getting ready for the rebound. I am I'm sure that they will have a, a positive contribution to the Indonesian economy by bringing new technological solutions, opposing their engineering expertise and investing in your country even more than they are actually doing. And they are doing a lot. As far as I'm concerned, and, and to conclude, uh, I would like to tell, that, uh, to tell the French companies that I am convinced that Indonesia will recover very soon its pre-crisis economic development trajectory. The working age population, the middle class are increasing, urbanization is growing fast, domestic as well as foreign investments are dynamic, and last but not least, new technologies are spreading very fast and are interesting a lot of uh, investors. All these trends make me think that Indonesia should be a, a priority and a strategic market for the French companies. The French Embassy and all the partners of the Team France are at your disposal to inform you and support you in your business uh, development in Indonesia. And uh, I'm very happy to be able to welcome in a few months uh, the, the mission of, uh, organized by MEDEF International. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, President Louis Dreyfus uh, is working hard to, to organize this, uh, this very important mission. Uh, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Terima kasih, Maria. Thank you very much, Excellency. I'm, uh, I've been uh, disconnected. Uh, and thank you for taking over. Uh, now I'm connected again just to give the, 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 the floor and the micro to uh, François Corbin, uh, representative uh, uh, 
for, for France, for uh, Adele. Merci, Philippe. So, good morning, everyone. I would like to, to warmly thank uh, Mr. Minister Erlanga Hazardou and Mr. Minister Suarzo Bonoafa for their presence with us today. Um, from Indonesia to France and from France to Indonesia for the strong support and continuous support in our uh, relation. Uh, I would be very short. I would just, just would like to, to say is that it's very important in my point of view to seize any opportunity for business community and for public authorities to interact as we do right now and to better know each other because Indonesia is a, a large and successful nation. Uh, you are, you, uh, Indonesia is a key actor in Asia. Uh, Indonesia has experienced uh, continuous growth, of course. It is hurting uh, by uh, COVID right now, but uh, I'm very optimistic about the capability of uh, Indonesia to recover very, very soon. So you have a, a growing and fast growing middle class with uh, growing expectations and uh, French companies have competencies, have capabilities and uh, have a willingness to really increase their presence and their relation with the Indonesian business community. And I think the fact that there are many, many companies with us this morning is a, a very pragmatic proof of this uh, willingness. So I am personally convinced that we can do much better in the future, that we can increase significantly our flow of economic relations between our two countries. So this mission of the special representative of the Minister for Economic Relations with uh, ASEAN countries has just been uh, uh, defined for me recently. And I just would like to, to tell you that uh, I can guarantee of my personal commitment to do my best to help uh, Indonesian company and French companies to work closely together. Thank you very much. Merci François, thank you François. Uh, now uh, I, uh, I will uh, have the pleasure and the honor of introducing uh, the first of our uh, minister guests from Indonesia. And uh, if uh, uh, everything is okay, it should be to uh, Mr. Erlanga Ahtarto, uh, Minister, Coordinating Minister of uh, Economic Affairs, uh, who will give us a presentation on the general sit economic situation and financial situation post uh, uh, COVID uh, and on the uh, uh, reforms which Indonesia is uh, uh, putting in place. Uh, Mr. Minister uh, Erlanga, uh, are you? On the line. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Uh, Louis Dreyfus, Chairman of France Indonesia Business Council of MEDEF. And uh, Excellency Ambassador of Republic Indonesia to Republic France, Pa Armanata Christiawan Nasir. Yang Excellency Ambassador of Republic France to Republic Indonesia. Mr. Excellency, Mr. Oliver Chamber, and uh, officials, France and Indonesian related agencies, representative of French and Indonesia business who are present in this uh, webinar today, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, once again, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our ambassador, as well as to uh, Mr. Dreyfus of MEDEF International for inviting me and organizing these virtual meetings. I would like also to thank ambassador of Oliver Chambert in Jakarta for his support to this event. I, it was always a great uh, pleasure for me to be able to meet and have productive discussion with business community and I will brief you on several topics, including the recent, recent development of COVID-19 in Indonesia, national economic measure taken by Indonesian government to mitigate the COVID-19 and updates on the omnibus law. 
And I think uh, before I uh, start my presentation, I'd like to apologize due to the previous commitment. I cannot attend the whole duration of the forum. However, I think uh, I will uh, address some of the issues and Minister Monoarfa will be uh, also give a presentation on this uh, occasion. As of 29 of June, the Indonesian government have identified 55,092 uh, COVID-19 cases, in which uh, 23,800 patients are recovered and 2,805 are died. Like many other countries in the world, our economy is heavily affected by the pandemic. In the first quarter, our economy managed to grow on 2.97. And uh, however, the second uh, quarter, we expect to be uh, less, will be uh, minus, and uh, year on year expected, we are around uh, 0 to 0 0.5. It depends on who is making the projection. And I think uh, Indonesia so far is one of the three countries among with India and uh, China, who still on positive until the first quarter, but uh, hopefully with this uh, new normal exit strategy, the government can push more for the economic, so the economic will be more uh, open as uh, for business. So uh, in the same time, uh, government are looking into how to balance between uh, saving people life as well as uh, saving the livelihood of the Indonesian people. And uh, I highly appreciate the French development assistance through cooperating between IFD and PTSMI for supporting the health, in health infrastructure in dealing with the COVID-19. And uh, In uh, Indonesia, also appreciate the bilateral, bilateral uh, relations, and I believe uh, Indonesia uh, will strengthen our economic co collaborations in the global challenge caused by the pandemics, and uh, by maintaining the consultation and dialogue, as well as keeping the free flow of goods and uh, open for the essential goods, namely food, medical supplies, and equipment. On the trade side, uh, we are glad to note that on January, April 2020, Indonesia and France managed to achieve total trade of 754 million, which is higher to compare with trade in the same period last year. So in 2019, Indonesia total export to France was 956.8 million. Seafoods like tuna, shrimps, and prawn, and white pepper, white pepper is dominates Indonesian export to France in agriculture, on manufacturing sectors, CPO, rubbers, cocoa, motorcycles, sports, footwear are the main commodities export to France. Jewelry also the main exported uh, in the industrial sectors. In 2019, Indonesia total import from France was 1.38 billion, where butter, vegetables, gum, and dominate our uh, imports in agriculture. We also import wood pulps, tanks, airplanes, and turbines in manufacturing sectors, and also uh, the jewelries. Uh, becoming one of the commodities that uh, import as well. And then uh, diesel fuels and pre petroleum also dominates dominate in the import of oil and gas. Still, we have to be optimistic to find uh, our two-way trade uh, on the growth tra trajectory, even though uh, we are in the midst of this pandemic. On the investment side, the Indonesia Investment Coordinating Board acknowledged the French investment in Indonesia. The realization in 2019 
reached 16.89 million for 255 projects, a significant increase compared to previous list with uh, value at uh, 13.10 for uh, 186 uh, projects. I believe there is a great potential in trade and investment and there are untapped opportunities to be explored despite the global challenge which is currently faced by the both countries. And on recent national economic development, the government continuously monitor the economic impact of COVID-19 outbreaks. And uh, one of the positive side that uh, Indonesian macro that uh, on the Q4, we expect that uh, based on our budgets is around uh, in a range of zero to 2.3. And the rupiah exchange rate, even though uh, is weakened, but uh, lately has been strengthened and also the Jakarta Composite Index, which is in the earlier was under pressure, but at the moment also the index has uh, also strengthened recently. And uh, Indonesia trade balance is about 2.6 billion, and uh, Indonesian uh, central bank have a positive uh, cash for foreign uh, exchange about 130 billion. So, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia has taken a number of steps, including uh, launching the stimulus package, which aim to strengthen the domestic economy. And this also helped by the, the additional stimulus package, which also uh, supporting the domestic or public purchasing power. In Indonesia, also supporting the company liquidity as well as uh, ease of export import and the total package uh, for stimulus package for COVID-19 is 695.2 trillion which is on the health safety net is about 87.5 trillion which is actually uh, we aim for uh, healthcare expenditures as well as to transform the healthcare services in the which is including the worker incentives and actually indonesia also supporting policy for uh, reproduction of covid 19 or co-production of covid 19 under the asean leadership uh, meeting uh, on <coughs> yesterday or two days ago the government commits that covid uh, vaccines will become a public goods so that the public goods can be available for people in ASEAN. And during this uh, meeting, I would like also that friends to be open for collaboration. So I think we can help uh, the Indonesian people <coughs> to get the access for vaccine itself. On the national economic recovery, we, keep, uh, we will keep maintaining the balance between economic and the public health. And uh, the government also uh, looking into the expanding of the new normal. Slide lanjut. <laughs> and uh, I think on the economic side, uh, Indonesia also feel that uh, industry 4.0 will be more important than before. So during the pandemic, the Indonesia accelerated the digital transformation, continue infrastructure development and improving human capital. And also uh, we put emphasis on the renewable energy development. At the moment, we also revitalizing our manufacturing sectors and uh, hopefully we can attract more investment and uh, build a solid economy with much improved labor market. On digital uh, transformation, currently estimated that 71% people using digital payment 9% uh, increase in compare with a uh, few years ago and 
during the large scale social restriction, measure change and behavioral consumption of goods and services from offline to online. The government also <coughs> continue to build on infrastructure development, which is actually recommend 91 projects as new strategic projects. So I think uh, the government is still uh, committed on the development and the investment is about 1,422 trillion. On the omnibus law, the government confidence that the uh, omnibus law can be yeah, uh, the omnibus law can be pushed forward, and uh, with the parliament, we are discussing that the target will be early August. We can finalize with the parliament to make an easier environment and license. In closing, allow me again to underline the importance of collaboration between Indonesia and France, so we can mitigate the impact for COVID-19. So I really hope that this virtual meeting will lead towards mutual benefit collaboration and strengthen relation between Indonesia and Republic of France, especially during this challenging time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Uh, now, um, uh, it, it's been a very clear presentation and it uh, puts uh, forward one important point that the relations, economic relations and business relations between France and Indonesia can, which are quite good and existing, but uh, they could be much greater uh, in the future if uh, both countries do the, and uh, both business si uh, sectors do the effort for, so for uh, increasing their relations. Uh, Bogdan, on passe la parole à qui maintenant? Je sais. Alors, um, if Mr. Minister is connected, um, Mr. Mono Arfa, either is deputy, Mr. Um, it's uh, Mr. Simon Joutak who will Simon be taking Joutak. over? Yes. So the minister is not connected. So uh, I understand that it will not be Mr. Mono Arfa, but his uh, number two in the minister, uh, Mr. Simon Joutak, will be taking over the presentation. Is that so? Yep. So, let it... Yes, they are switching the presentation. <laughs> so... So, Mr. Simon Jotak, the floor is yours. If if it's if you're on the line, uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, hello. Friska Aprilia. Yeah. Very good morning to all of you uh, in France. Uh, I'm Kennedy Siman Juntak, Deputy Minister for Minister of National Development Planning Agencies. I'm so sorry that my minister is still on the meeting, but I hope that he will join us as soon as possible. But to keep up the time, then I will give some presentation that has been prepared by the office to you of, of, of all. I will give you the idea about our national development planning for the next five years. As, uh, as you know, the president have gives us these three uh, three directions. We will use our national midterm plan as serve as a guide, guidance and plan for moving forward to Indonesia on world. In the, what we mean Indonesia on world is Indonesia Maju. In that uh, 
if that uh, uh, document will show and vision about how about Indonesia in 2045. This is a, our Indonesian vision. Indonesian vision. Uh, of that, the other things that more clear that direction of the president to achieve that all the target, this is one very important, we have to open the business must be more easier to for implementation. What he said, don't put everything complicating, must be accelerated. This is one very important to give us the, the, the environment how the president want to speed up the implementation of the plan. Next, next, I give you the idea of the what's it in a, a, the midterm plan it is, and then going forward to the how we look at the, the country in next 2045. We hope that the country will exceed the middle income trap in 2036. 2036. Look at that. The time then at the time, our GDP per capita will be around. 30,000 uh, US dollar PPP in the PPP. Then we are now in the 2020 2024. And then what's one to achieve in that a real GDP 5.7% real per capita GDP 5%. We hope in the 2045 we are the fifth largest economy in the world. Then to achieve that in the next five years, in the next five years, we put, we put some uh, target on the manufacturing industry, tourism sector, and creative economy. As you look at that, we put that very clear, the target. Then if we go to the more, how we put that the target in our, uh, uh, in our uh, agenda, we have a seven agenda from the president mission up to the agenda of the development. We put that in very clear in the economic resilience, regional development, qual qual qualified competitiveness, human resources. Human resources very important. Human resources in the very important in the next five years. Then if we go to, uh, to more detail of our target, we have some target of each sector. We put that some target. It might be you are interested I will give you some uh, highlight, especially in the transportation. We will develop a toll road, especially in Sumatra. We will connect the toll road in Sumatra. And, and in energy, we focus on uh, uh, renewable energy to achieve 23% of our renewable energy mix in 2045, in 2025. In maritime, Time also we plan to uh, develop seven port, main port, and then some of the smaller port. We have that uh, target in the very clear, and then we can I can you can give you uh, more in detail later on. Then how we look at the, our global investment in Indonesia. I think the Minister of uh, Economic Affairs has been explained it clearly. I will skip this this one, uh, as has been explained by Minister of Economic. Then, next. Uh, in 2021, what's our target? I gave you the five years horizon and then we will focus on the next uh, 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 year, uh, 2021. As the pandemic uh, happened uh, in Indonesia, then we didn't change the target of economic recovery, but we put some uh, focus on some area that we think that we are still uh, lag behind. Say the, the main, the main uh, the main target in the, the main team in the 2021 is the recovery 
of economic and social. Then what in that team we put some special uh, attention or uh, focus first is the strengthening health of facility and then protecting vulnerable communities and the business world and then uh, reducing the financial sector pressure. This is a, the, the mit, to mitigate the pan, pandemic uh, impact. <clears throat> to give more condition uh, for the next uh, 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 five years. <clears throat> then how we, do, we stipulated the uh, the five years project compared to the previous one. Then in the next five years, we are more clear to develop not only the target, but also we put, we, uh, we develop some main project of that a uh, 41 main project, then want to implement next year, next five years. The 41 project, in the 41 main project, major project involve ministries, institution, local government, and st state-owned enterprises, and also community. This is then to put that uh, more clear. Before we all we all only put in the uh, plan only the target. Now now we go downward to the major project. I will give you, uh, if you are uh, interested, I will provide you with the major uh, project as a uh, sum here. Say, of the major project, the total investment that we need is for 4,039.98 billion US dollar for the next five years. In energy, is oil palm based renewable energy development. 20,000 megawatt power plant trans, transmission to to, to 90,000 kilometer a sec, second and then also a substation. We put that very clear the target of the each uh, 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 its major project. Then in transport, we will uh, continue to develop the high speed rail in Java Island and also. In, in Sulawesi, and also we plan to develop a, a seven integrated port network. This is the main port in the country. And then in urban mass transportation, we will develop six metropolitan area. It is uh, Jakarta, as you know that Jakarta we have been starting five years ago. Then we will continue that to cover all Jakarta. Then we will add another five cities, such as uh, Surabaya, Makassar, Medan, uh, Bandung, Semarang, and also uh, this five. This yeah, this five. Makassar. Then in maritime, this is fishing port and fish market. We will uh, develop in the east part of Indonesia. Rehabilitation of ponds in the stream and milk production center, strengthening sea security. I think in this maritime, we have been started discussion with uh, AFD to support us to, to, to develop some uh, of the project. Uh, thanks to, to our cooperation with the uh, uh, friends in this area. For the transport area also, we will still continue a discussion with some apartheid in, uh, uh, in Korea, uh, in, in France. Then this the other uh, the other major project we can look at here. This very detail I can share you uh, later on. Look at that. This is uh, uh, all the project, not only the title, but we have been uh, about the, the more clear of the want to do in each project. If you are interested in that, I will uh, develop it. Uh, I will uh, share that to you to look at more detail and then to discuss about uh, uh, the project. That's the major project in the uh, in the plan. And then 
how we will do it one of the modality then we want to discuss <coughs> that most of the project we will do through the ppp scheme then of that project that we have been put in the major project we have been identifying then some project could be uh, uh, implement through the PPP scheme. We have been here the list of the project. Uh, I can share you as I out that also the the, the the investment needed then for this PPP uh, scheme. This some of the also the PPP scheme, including the airport that has been ready to offer uh, if you want to interest that in, the, in that project. I think I have been sharing you some of the ideas, some of the project more clear for the next five years. We can discuss it and then welcome for the investment in our bilateral cooperation. Terima kasih. Thank you. Terima kasih to you. Thank you for this uh, presentation, very detailed, with a lot of interesting, interesting information for the French companies. And we can see that the large uh, potential for developing relation between the in Indonesia and the French companies. Uh, I'm asking um, now uh, Bogdan from Medef, uh, where do we stand? Uh, do we um, uh, do we go to Q and A now? Thank you, President. Uh, as we are uh, running out of time, I suggest we may switch to Q and A session. And uh, I would like maybe to to invite uh, Indonesian Embassy to mention us if Minister will be connected, uh, also to include him in the Q and A session. Um, with your permission, uh, President, I would like maybe to, to give the floor to uh, Mr. Mascarat from DS Avocado for a general question uh, on uh, legislation and legal aspects. Mr. Mascarat, please, could you switch on your microphone and ask a question? That Hello. Hello, good yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Selamat siang. Dengan hormat Bapak Minister Artarto. Terima kasih banyak atas presentasi anda. I am Luca Mascara dari Kantor Hukum Perancis DS Avoca, in partnership with Armand Yapsunto Moramsia and Partners. Um, thank you very much again for your presentation today. My question concerns the omnibus law. As we know, due to the COVID situation, the debate over this reform, which was really expected by foreign investors, has been delayed. So could you share further insights concerning the potential provisions of such a reform that would particularly interest foreign investors, uh, for instance, concerning foreign investment regulation or labor law? And as well, if you could tell us a few words concerning the draft positive investment law uh, which has been announced earlier this year to replace the famous negative investment law, uh, which is uh, um, limiting um, the, the foreign shareholding uh, in uh, Indonesian companies. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak. Bye bye. Donc, la question a été posée oui, à monsieur. Je... Est-ce qu'il l'a bien entendu Oui, oui, je pense que c'est en train de... Exact. Voilà, la connexion est en train d'arriver. D'accord. J'espère qu'il n'y aura pas le même délai entre chaque question et chaque réponse. Non, voilà, on, on, pas a, aller très loin. on a le speaker qui est, voilà, qui est maintenant. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, please. The, the, the floor is yours for the for, to answer the question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you uh, very much for the question um, regarding the uh, question regarding the uh, omnibus uh, law. Uh, which is currently still being deliberated by uh, uh, the Indonesian government and also the Indonesian parliament. Well, uh, basically the law uh, or the, uh, the draft law on job creation is, is expected to be a, a post-pandemic rescue net to restore the business world. Uh, the MSMEs uh, cooperative through investment facilities uh, as well as to promote job creation and increase the uh, protection of our, our workers. So uh, Indonesia is uh, among the few G20 uh, countries that are, as you know, projected to experience uh, positive economic growth in 2020. And also next year, uh, we will follow that the IMF uh, forecast that Indonesia economic growth will uh, reach 8.2%. Uh, and uh, when the economy is expected to recover from the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, we hope that the uh, law on job creation, uh, hopefully, uh, we can finalize this and uh, by the end of this year uh, would be a positive catalyst to achieve economic growth uh, through ease of investment and also to job creation. And uh, the bill itself, the uh, draft law, it contains uh, topics uh, ranging from business licensing to research and innovation. And also, is, it is expected to uh, initiate the next economic transformation for Indonesia to spur uh, uh, economic recovery and uh, as well as avoiding the middle income trap. So, uh, the uh, expected transformation will cover, among others, uh, regulation simplification uh, in national as well as sub national level. Uh, improving the uh, competitiveness of uh, businesses uh, as well as uh, the creation of jobs and most importantly of course this uh, improving uh, the ease of doing business in uh, Indonesia uh, increasing as well the competitiveness of our uh, uh, SMEs and cooperatives and most important of all is to uh, this bill will create a legal certainty for, especially for foreign uh, business invest investors to uh, operate in Indonesia. As I mentioned, that uh, it's still being discussed uh, in, in the Indonesian Parliament uh, together with the government, and uh, we expect this bill, uh, as the minister has informed. Uh, that uh, we expect this to be uh, finalized and uh, implemented by the, well, by the end of this year. Um, maybe that's uh, my response for now for the, uh, uh, the progress of the Omnibus uh, Draft Law Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, President. With your permission, we will continue with questions. I will uh, give the floor to Priyanka. Uh, she will help me with sectoral related questions and we will open with the maritime sector. Uh, Louis Dreyfus, our matter. Uh, I think we have a question from Mr. Camille Beffa. Uh, Mr. Beffa, if you're online, you have the floor. You can open your mic and ask your question. Mr. Biffa? Oh. Maybe I will take over from uh, my colleague uh, Camille. Uh, to put the question uh, forward, that uh, we had two questions concerning uh, for, for Louis Dreyfus Armata, uh, but one is very uh, specific. What are the pr 
prospects for the development of uh, marine renewable energies in Indonesia, in particular uh, for offshore wind and tidal energies, which is a sector in which uh, we have at Louis Dreyfus uh, developed a real expertise for almost 10 years now. Mungkin Pak Kennedy bisa bantu jawab ini. Oke, okay, bisa Pak Dubes. <laughs> Buat Pak Dubes jawab ini. Uh, thank you for your uh, presentation. Then, as I say before, basically in energy, then in the next five years, we only we only look at the world only focus on the renewable energy. Then the fossil, it is a continuation of the previous that we didn't develop a new new project on the fossil. Then it is starting renewable energy. Then what we have understood our renewable energy basically on the using the uh, water and also the uh, waste to energy. Then in the area that you have been asking, the marine energy and tidal, yes, I think we have been discussing it in several times, uh, not on the, oh yeah, we have with uh, uh, some countries, that it is still the technology we have to understand more than also the cost, how to put the cost of the investment. Uh, this is one is not yet in our uh, framework. We are still discussing it in our, uh, but we are interested that in, in especially in tidal, we have a, a discussion on in one or two project in tidal energy in Lombok area. It's a small island there. Then for the marine energy, we are still on the uh, uh, how to understand that, how to put the cost, such kind of that. But Yes, we are uh, in the next uh, in, in the next future. We only focus on the developing uh, renewable. Welcome for any uh, project that we want to, to proceed in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to being in contact with uh, yourself and Bapenas on that subject. Terima kasih. Uh, all right. Yes, uh, we have another question from the maritime sector uh, from Ms. Uh, Fanny Martinez from CMACGM. Um, Ms. Martinez, you, you have the floor for your question. You can open your mic. Hello. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please. Uh, thank you uh, very much for this meeting and thank you for the opportunity uh, uh, of asking uh, this question. So, uh, based on government regulation, um, VAT exemption is given to BUT, Badan Usaha Tetap, so basically a permanent establishment. Currently, in uh, from the Ministry of Transportation only recognizes the registration under local agents. Hence, VAT on port due is still applied by Pelindo 2. What are the future decisions taken to solve this uh, discrepancy, whether a portal enhancement or new regulation? And uh, the regulation or scheme for the refund on the VAT paid for previous years until now? Otto, kalau ada Pak Otto Ardianto bisa bantu untuk jawab ini. I think we have Mr. Otto from the Ministry of Otto Ardianto. Oh, dia masih di luar itu ya. Is anyone connected to, to answer the question in Jakarta? Uh, they're connecting. Otto Arkian. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you see me? 
We yes. can hear you. Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the questions. Uh, actually, uh, you are right that uh, currently the the PAP exemptions is only given to the uh, local or in our terms is about the, is uh, in the form of the BUT or this is the legal entity of Indonesian local. Uh, however, uh, international uh, ship can be still can be services uh, either through agency Indonesian agency, but the uh, but the impact is. Uh, we cannot well in our system in the uh, in our system we cannot uh, exclude the EFA, EFAT, uh for using the local uh, for using the agent local agents. Uh, well, what we can do is uh, based on our clarification to uh, PT Pelindo in this case uh, in the case of CMLCG and Pelindo two. Uh, 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 what we suggested is if you can contact, if you can appoint your local agents, uh, the listed local agents, uh, in, because the inner port or system will uh, recognize these local agents. If uh, the local agents uh, appointed, the local agent nodes uh, cannot be uh, exempt for the PAT. Uh, however, we still uh, try to uh, well, in our case right now, we still try to discuss with the Minister of Finance uh, and also uh, 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 Plindo 2 uh, because uh, based on the Plindo 2 uh, services in our uh, government decree number 74, VAT, can, VAT that has been uh, paid to the government, to the country for case of CMA, CMA CGM can be uh, exemption for the FAT because the agency in Indonesia, uh, uh, because, the, because the agency in Indonesia right now still cannot recognize in the inner port. So after the clearance, where well, we are, well, we need to discuss this with again, we, we sit together with the Pelindo. After the clearance, this automatic can, uh, this, this automatically can uh, uh, eliminate the FAT. The VAT that has been paid to Pelindo 2. Uh, again, we have to discuss it whether it can be repaid to CGM, CGM uh, uh, for the past years. So maybe this is right now that uh, we get clarification from Pelindo 2. All right, thank you very much for your answer. Um, we'll move now to the digital sector. We have a question from Ms. Uh, Corinne Murcia Giudicelli from the company Suris. Uh, Ms. Murtia, you have the floor for your question. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, the um, minister has presented the recovery plan for Indonesia. A lot of uh, infrastructure project. My question concerns the uh, digital economy. I would like to know if uh, it is in Indonesia uh, focus to relaunch the economy uh, via the digitalization of a number of uh, services and uh, uh, developing the uh, infrastructure for uh, services application using uh, digital um, technologies. Thank you. Pakai tadi bisa pakai tadi? Pak Pak Dubes selalu saya servis. Yes, uh, you are very right. Then digitalization, I think it has been in the presentation of the Minister of Economic Affairs. But I will put you more detail on the how it is in the, in the, in the graph. Then your question, I will try to answer in three parts. One is the infrastructure, infrastructure of digital. I think we have been quite successful in that. And all across the country, 80% of the across the country has been reached by digital. Then 
all community about, about 60% of the community could be reached by digital. That's why we are we are quite safe in the pandemic yesterday and now. Then some of the activity we can put the infrastructure. We will continue that to reach all the up to the village level the next five years in the in the infrastructure we develop BTS uh, 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 with the cable and also the satellite. Now we are all, uh, uh, in contract to, to to have the satellite for public uh, digital uh, up to the all level of the country. This infrastructure in the government and then utilization. I think the the the, the private we will go to market economy as ex explained by the minister. Then how to boost that? This is a very important question. In the the government sector. We will use as much as possible uh, services through digital. What we say as PB, the government, e-government. E-government, we will develop e-government. The first one to develop the data. Data collection will be that government data will be in one, in governance basically will manage that. Then the second one is the, to develop the data center for the whole government. Then we will be more digitalized in digital. Then now we are discussing with friends as well. Thank you. I've been in bilateral for, for several years and contacted you. Then we will develop the data center for the government. I think you will be on the discussion with your government and the French government. It's in the in the government. Then we hope it's uh, next year, will the government services will be more digital, then will be more transparent. One is going to the government, moving to the digital, I think the private will more faster in that. Then the other, the other now that we have been thinking, as I said before, management, data, and then the service utilization, utilization of the uh, digital. In the government, what the government do will do in the, in the next five years, or we will set, have been started in now. In the education, long term, edu, a long, uh, long distance education, I think will be applied. Due pandemic, we will be accelerated. Then the second one that just opened that we have been tried before, the telemedicine. The telemedicine will be started. Then it will be digitalization of the economy of the activity in the in the uh, in the country will be accelerated, especially due pandemic. And my 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 role mostly is to prepare the infrastructure. Then, yes, you are right. Then we will do that as much as possible. Now, uh, almost every day, I prepare the, uh, what kind of policies of the government will do to boost the digitalization of the economy, especially in the government sector, through the preparation of the infrastructure, as I said before, infrastructure, data center, and then the satellite. This is three areas that now I think we will launch in the next one or two months. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have now a question on the new capital project uh, from Ms. Marion Milosevic um, from Dassault System. Uh, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, yes, just the. Because... <laughs> You, you can go ahead, please. Okay, good, perfect. No, just it was very interesting to see all the different projects on energy, transportation, and maritime. And we were wondering how the whole thing will be linked in the end uh, to the new capital. Uh, is it, uh, where is this project standing now? Uh, do you have any next steps in mind? I know that the COVID pandemic um, kind of stopped uh, everything, but is there a perspective to relaunch this? And in this, perspective, would you be keen to work with foreign companies? And as we were 
uh, talking about digitalizations, would you need like digital solutions to support you in leading and implementing this project of new capital? Sepertinya ini lagi ke Papa Kennedy karena you are the right man for this question. Tentang capital ibu kota baru, the new capital Pak Kennedy. Boleh ya? Ya, ya buat Pak Tulpes, apa yang nggak boleh, Pak. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I will answer this, uh, uh, the project, the prestigious project, uh, ambitious one, and then It might be the question due to pandemic. I will put your question more. Uh, do you want to change uh, the plan? I think up to now, up to now, we are discussing it all the time. We are still in the plan. We are still in the plan of the uh, establishing new new capital. To make sure we are still. Yes, we are a little bit behind. I will explain. Uh, then what we have been doing now then to do the master plan to find out it is has been undergoing doing uh, developing the master plan the master we hope that before december the master plan has been ready it is in the in our office in the bapenas office then the second one we are preparing the law for the uh, uh, new new capital we have been we have to put that in the law now, now the law now it is still in the government We hope that before we to, to send it to the parliament uh, last February, but due to the pandemic, it has been delayed. And they, I think uh, next uh, several months we will submit that to the to the parliament because we have been always in the consultation with the parliament. We hope that we will uh, 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 all the things we can start this our plan in December. December and all the things, the law and the master plan will be in in, in hand in December. This is the, the plan. Then, in the meantime, we also coordinated to the tail the, the tail plan, urban planning. We are in the public works, master plan and urban planning kind in the in the parallel. Uh, in the in the uh, as mainly in the public works and the transportation. And, Uh, other ministry as well. Then, how the, 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 the how we put the, the, the capital project in the whole economy? This is the question, maybe. The right question. The last week, uh, last month, the, the government has been new uh, instruction to my office that we will put the new capital, this is the meaning, New capital as a super hub to connecting to connecting the domestic value chains and global value chains. Then to do that, we will invite more investment, more investment. This is the um, then we we put that as mostly mostly private investment in the developing the uh, capital uh, in the future. If I can show you the capital, where is the capital? It might be for some friend, and then I will, this in my slide, basically, I have been, uh, uh, this question, I have been quite prepared for this question. And then there's a two cities in the, in the close to the, close to the, uh, If you can, uh, this is one. Yeah, no, no, no. Before, this is one. You call the new Ibu Kota Negara is the uh, the new capital in the, another island. This is the first in the history to move a, 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 a capital to the new to the other island. Then in the island, look at that. IKN is the new capital, and there is a two cities close to the uh, uh, capital, the new capital. This Samarinda and Balikpapan. We will use that as a hub for a new industrial zone. Basically, connecting the Samarinda and Balikpapan. What is in that, in that, in that uh, 
uh, surrounding of the capital now mostly the cpo coal and and then we will develop the new industry on, over there then we will use this project as a prime mover prime mover for the economy for the next five years to make sure that we are still uh, 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 how to how to utilize this uh, capital for the economy not for the ambition as well not only for the ambition of the country but to use that as the prime mover to the whole economy locally and globally thank you very much thank you uh, for your detailed answer uh, we'll move now to the food industry we have a question from zapoline celeron from pernod ricard um, Ms. Celeron, if you can uh, open your mic, the floor is yours. Hello? Your mic is open, please. Miss Celeron, we can't hear you. So maybe while the uh, connecting connection yes. issue is fixed. Yes. Okay, please. Sorry, excuse me. Um, so, uh, uh, hi, Mr. Minister, I have a question. Um, importers of wine and spirits are usually given quotas and licenses to import those products into Indonesia. After suspending these quotas for a few months, it appears licenses are being given to several importers right now. However, wine and spirits coming from the EU, the European Union, appear to be left out of those quotas as they have been for more than a year. Um, I know this topic has been included in several high-level exchanges between Indonesia and the EU over the past few months. I was wondering if you had any information on how the situation is likely to evolve uh, for EU spirits, um, if and when the ban could be lifted. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So on on this, uh, I will ask my colleague at the embassy, uh, the trade attaché, to uh, provide an answer. I think because uh, I don't think we have anyone uh, in Jakarta who is able to answer this uh, in detail. Please, Ibu Mega. Thank you so much, Bapak, awesome. for for the opportunity. Thank you for the question. Uh, for imports of alcoholic drinks, the allocation is requested every 15 days uh, in April for the types and groups of uh, drink which are listed as the annex in the latest permendak of 25 uh, year 2019. And if we see uh, in the historical data, uh, it's proven that France is still actually exporting to Indonesia, especially uh, for wine, sparkling wine, rum, gin, spirits, and whiskey. Yeah, whiskey. Yeah. And uh, this, week, this year, we also see the evidence of France exporting to Indonesia. And us in the embassy, we're also still uh, processing the registration of uh, distributor and agents for alcoholic drinks. So there is still uh, the evidence of uh, the transaction of uh, trade uh, uh, relationship of France and Indonesia for these alcoholic drinks. But uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, any more difficulties, you could uh, contact us directly. Uh, we're here for uh, uh, having a solution with Panel Richard and uh, having to have the strength relationship between Indonesia and France in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your answer. As we open the chapter of the agro question, I will try to connect with Adepta, Mr. Reocre, for a question on the food safety. Mr. Reocre, please could you switch on your mic and ask your question? 
Hello. Hello, can you hear yes, me? Yes, please. Okay, so I would like to thank, you know, all, all the excellency and the, the presentation of Mr. Bapenas, who spoke about the 41 project, you know, uh, 350 farming activities. So my two quest, two points in the agriculture is, one is about food safety. What is the situation for food safety in Indonesia to reduce the problem of antibiotic, antibiotic resistance? And uh, we have been active in Indonesia for 10 years with all mix. And my second part of agriculture is how, what is the policy for the five years to come to develop uh, family farmings along with uh, industrial farming in Indonesia? We have the know-how in France to develop small, medium-sized farmings in poor land, like in the mountains. And uh, I think, you know, we can develop that along with industrial farmings to help, you know, to generate, create jobs in rural areas and also to develop at the village levels added value involving you know, ladies' in employments. One example, you know, I could see you have a big import of dairy product in Indonesia, and to feed you know, the big population in Indonesia, we could develop you know, like the dairy industry with cows, sheep, and goats. And uh, by, uh, we have small size processing system in France to process 100 liters of milk per day, 500 liters of milk per day, as well as big units like Danone and Nestle. So I think France has a big know-how and big experience to help Indonesia you know, to feed their peoples for the villages and for the cities. Thank you for uh, your confirmations. Uh, uh, thank you. The, I think if I understand there's two questions, there's two parts to your question, maybe the the first one, uh, if I can ask uh, regarding food safety, if I can ask Pak Fajar from uh, Kemenko Economy to, to answer. Uh, maybe the second part, this is with regards to the planning uh, to develop uh, industrial farming in Indonesia. Uh, maybe Pak uh, Kennedy can, can answer that uh, if it's possible. So if may I ask Pak, uh, maybe Pak Fajar first to answer the, the first one with regards to food safety and uh, what is the situation uh, on food safety uh, in Indonesia? Okay, uh, Dubes, thank you for the question regarding the uh, uh, food safety. Uh, Indonesia is very much uh, committed to uh, enhance the capacity of uh, ensuring the food safety, uh, not just in the capital cities, major cities, but also throughout Indonesia, uh, in the villages or uh, small towns. Uh, we regularly uh, do the inspection as well um, to uh, ensure that the food that is distributed uh, is uh, safe uh, in, in a measured way. So um, as far as for food safety is concerned, uh, we have uh, specialized agencies who's dealing with that, of course, in coordination with the uh, relevant ministries and agencies such as the um, uh, Ministry of Agriculture as well. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, uh, our uh, position and our uh, 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 commitment regarding uh, the ensure, ensuring the food safety is uh, never been low, and we are, we are striving to enhance this uh, with uh, cooperation with a number of countries, including uh, France. Uh, and I believe that there are already some uh, activities, uh, joint uh, activities, which has been uh, uh, undertaken by uh, the relevant agencies between the two countries. So uh, uh, that I think uh, uh, is my uh, answer for uh, regarding the food safety part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Fajar. Pak Kennedy bisa bantu untuk yang pertanyaan kedua, bagian kedua. Ya, buat Pak Dubes. Yes, uh, thank you for your question. It is 
in very very of my heart. I mean, in infrastructure, but agriculture always is my hobby. Then I want to explain it to you about the how our agri our agriculture Indonesian planning. Then in our plan, then I cannot stipulate it. I didn't stipulate it very clearly before. Food security is one of the main main idea in the planning in our planning food security then to achieve that yes i agree with you there is true way to achieve that food security through the family agriculture is small small in family agriculture and then is industrial industrial farming that's the first one we've been uh, try to develop that since even now we are still the problem is how to in, increase the quality of the production the quality of the production of the uh, family uh, then the second one to connect them to the market to connect the the, the, the the family planning to the market and then they get a more revenue I think we are introducing some of the uh, uh, big industries like a Danone to, 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 to work with closely with uh, directly work with the uh, uh, agriculture. As I say the uh, kacang uh, nuts production we connecting with the, uh, some area of the uh, agriculture. Then they have more. Uh, understand what the market want of the production and then where the, 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 the product would be get by the industry. We are trying to many, many projects that we have. If they're not interested in connecting the industry to the farming, small, small farming, through the many, many cooperative or uh, village fund, we, we do it through the village fund. We provide the fund directly to the village to give them more resources to increase their production and quality. We have been doing it many, many years, still want to work in that, but it's not enough. We have 260 million people. Then we are have developing a new idea in some area to keep, to, uh, to keep the supply of the uh, agricultural product enough to feed the the population, we will develop estate farming. This is a new idea to us. It's a new idea for Indonesia to achieve that. It is now in the discussion of the government to establish some estate farming in some area to keep the production enough to feed the, the people, 260 million. We welcome if uh, some uh, investor will also join our, our report in that. We are now looking the area in Kalimantan, in uh, Sulawesi, in uh, Papua, to have an estate of farming estate, especially in the some staple product, rice production. Uh, I will sell. I think rice is still now in our mind. Uh, corn production. Corn basically we will uh, for the corn we connecting the family uh, agriculture with the industry. That's for the uh, rice, I think we will establish a new idea to develop, establish uh, estate farming in some area to feed the, 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 the people. We welcome uh, any idea then we want to, to join the agriculture uh, sector. Terima kasih. Thank you very much for, for your answer. I see from the chat too that we have a question from Sofreco. Mr. Fabrice, please, the floor is yours. Yes, hello, thank you. Thank you very much for taking my question. Um, indeed, we are a consulting firm working on cooperation programs. And uh, my question uh, would be um, about, um, well, first, what are your expectations Towards uh, Euro European Union delegation and Indonesia cooperation, and uh, more precisely, there is an upcoming Erasmus 
Indonesia uh, related assistance program. This will be uh, an institutional capacity strengthening program. And I would like, like to ask about uh, your expectations and the main field of application uh, for institutional capacity strengthening uh, you, you expect from this, uh, from this program. And if I may add, this program shall work on trade and investment policies, trade policy facilitation, and as well on um, export quality infra infrastructure. Thank you. Itu maksudnya Bapak Nas, cuma itu yang direktur ada orang. Ini, uh, terima kasih uh, Pak. Ini terkait dengan this is about the cooperation capacity building. I think uh, is can someone from Bapak Nas, Bapak ada siapa uh, untuk Pak Kennedy uh, mengenai capacity building uh, program and what are we expecting? Uh, Dari EU dalam konteks uh, dukungan capacity building. Yes, yes. I think a long time ago I have been in part of the discussion with the EU as well, for, but it has been lost for some time. We in uh, our cooperation with the EU, we put a capacity building as a main uh, block of the, of the uh, cooperation. But I think it's not quite well implemented then it's uh, scarce in many many small small projects then if i may now we concentrated in uh, professional training for human capital development if we put more uh, resources or we focus on the professional training on some area said industry or trade or whatever it is that vocational training but could be massive. We have a summer with the EU. I've been in discussing it that 10 years ago. That is small, small. It's not affected any. Yes, it's very good. I am right, it's very good. But we want to achieve now more, uh, have a more leverage to the economy. That's why we discussed that, say, with some uh, German, Germany, that we have a big uh, program on the vocational training in many many areas including trade facilitation we can do that but vocational training put that in more bigger uh, perspective in one focus area in fact it could be industrial processing could be on the trade could be agriculture vocational training this is one of the our main uh, objective in the next five years because if you look at the, the demography, this is up to 2035. Most of the, our uh, people in the young generation, young generation, it's 30, 35 years. Then they need a vocational training. They need vocational training. If we lost this vocational training, then this is why we have a big, big program on the focus of training. We invite you, uh, if you, a you or a friends want to, to, to join that. But with the you, we have that capacity, we put that capacity building, but it's very, very limited and small and a very broad area. It's very broad. This might crit always criticize uh, 10 years ago. If we put that in one area that we can agree on, vocational training, we will be more efficient and effective than have a leverage to the economy. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now move to the defense sector. We have a question from uh, Mr. Rémi Gardon from the group La Croix. Um, yeah, Hello. Yours. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please. Good morning or good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I have a very short question to uh, Deputy Minister of Bapenas. As far as the sectoral priorities are concerned, what about the defense procurement plan? Will it be affected, and uh, if yes, 
what might remain priorities in the different sector. Thank you. Pak Dubes tadi on defense or on general? What you, I, what you no, I think this is more of a general uh, government procurement program and how it works. Okay. Uh, procurement, I think this, as we are part of the world, we are open. And, and what do you mean? The, 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 the law on the procurement, I don't know. But if you say the, the, in what types and then mostly at the government sector is still on the two area. Two area, what I mean, infrastructure and then uh, vocational tra training and, and education, vocational training. That's our sector, mostly our uh, area of, of the government uh, procurement. Then if you asking how they do that, then if we are open our law on the, uh, our, our regulation on the procurement. It's I think too open uh, for me. I always criticize too open for uh, usually international bidding. It's open for any who uh, put uh, based on the law that go to the to, to enter the procurement that's why uh, basically infrastructure the area infrastructure is road uh, 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 toll road uh, bridges uh, uh, all the all sector of the infrastructure and then it's a big big project we still continue the same and continue uh, high level. Then the second one that we are starting now is in the vocational. In the vocational, we have a big, big procurement, the vocational, and also in some education. I think in the next half uh, year, it might be also in the hospital. That because you have to in, improve our uh, health sector. Then next year, then how to reform our <coughs> sector as a pandemic uh, effect of the pandemic you, we know that is still weak then for the next year then i think i will say our health sector will be some will be increased a little bit and more than infrastructure still there education still there but we will put focus also on the health sector. Thank you. Maybe if I may, I, I got a question from uh, Denis Verret who has some issue to connect and uh, Denis Verret would like to understand the, better understand the impact of the crisis on the budget of defense equipment acquisition and also the impact on airlines industry in Indonesia. Uh, thank you. Uh, there's two parts to this question. First, maybe on the issue of uh, the impact of the airline industry, I could ask uh, Pa Otto from uh, the Ministry of Transportation, uh, who will be uh, able to, to address this question uh, with regards to the impact of budget of the defense uh, due to COVID. Uh, maybe Pa, pa uh, Kennedy can can uh, address this. Maaf ya, Pak Kennedy. <laughs> Favorit. Uh, silakan, Pak Otto. Hi, Pak Dubes. Uh, thank you for the questions. Well, you are right that the uh, industry sector, the uh, island sectors, uh, transportation and transport sector is very uh, got very a huge hit by this uh, pandemic. Uh, not just uh, well, but the main, the government is still trying to to balance between uh, the operation of the airport itself and the health uh, issue of it. Uh, unlike the other uh, countries, uh, we are uh, island countries, we have 70,000 uh, islands. Uh, we still have a very potentials in the local uh, flight. Uh, therefore, now we still, we are trying, we are already start opening a, fl a flight from Jakarta to major cities just uh, like uh, Surabaya. Well, in Surabaya, 
usually Garuda have like uh, 12 to 14 uh, flight. Uh, now we already started by uh, three to four. So we are trying now to to uh, uh, to uh, punch back to the uh, normal normal uh, sector. But however, this is a new normal. We cannot expect with the uh, in the island sectors uh, we have a hundred percent recovery. But the governments, the Ministry of Transport now is trying to give uh, stimulations like incentive to the airline sectors and also like uh, Garuda just recently uh, got the uh, commitment from the government to be injected by the government so that uh, it can still be operations. Other things, uh, uh, you know that the airport sectors, well now we are very open to, to foreign investors. Uh, just recently, uh, a, just before the crisis, January uh, 2020, uh, the first airport uh, will be operated by the uh, foreigners, by the non-state-owned enterprise or private. Uh, at that time, when we do the bid, uh, we have uh, five consortiums. Two are from France, actually, from Aegis uh, and also from Airport de Paris. Uh, and I see that uh, the appetite of this inventor is still uh, very good because even though the uh, pandemic hitting us, uh, other, sec uh, other airports like Batam airports, airport is, the party is still uh, trying to do to join the bid uh, with Angkasa Pura uh, one. And also uh, in the uh, Labuan Bajo, Changi and Kardik, uh, well, they ask, they ask for, they ask for uh, incentive or relaxation such as the commitment of the capex uh, realizations and also the concession and so forth. The government is very open with it. Uh, we don't want to have a, a lose-lose or a win-lose uh, situations. We try to uh, try to help the private sectors in the island sectors uh, as much as we can. Thank you. Oh, Uh, Pak Kennedy uh, bisa bantu pertanyaan mengenai dampak COVID terhadap uh, belanja uh, defense. Uh, thank you for your question. I think is uh, I can uh, answer you uh, easy. But all the ministries uh, have affect uh, due the COVID. No, all the ministries. This is my general uh, policies of the government. Then before we just cut all across the ministries, defense also uh, cutting the Then you might be your question and how will be after that, that the new policies that we will still continue to have a, a, to buy the equipment for the military. But we will be more selected uh, to some uh, equipment then for general one this is a new this is a new then we will develop our own industry through <coughs> operation with uh, some countries i think uh france will be interested a uh, part of a game <laughs> then we will buy some uh, equipment a more limited uh, import of the equipment for the defense uh, then we will develop uh, our uh, defense industry. Then to do that, we will work closely before we have to grow. But this is where we, now I think in the Minister of Defense, they have a discussion to limit it to which country then we want to part of our cooperation in the defense industry. Not like before, it's too broad. This is the critics. Then this is one want to limit it to focus. I think uh, France is still in the, the list. Uh,